county manager in the city manager. And that doesn't necessarily resolve an issue for sure today. Does it resolve? Resolve yeah. it because, you know, we're, we're, we're depending on the, the commissioners agreeing to it Monday night. Yeah. 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 The city council agreeing to it at their first opportunity. Two tracks. Two tracks. We've got our hope is that we resolve this issue and we don't, but statutorily, if we we can't sit, we can't sit around and say we're gonna wait three or four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve days to figure this thing out. We gotta we gotta go because we're statutorily required to stand something up if we can. So I have one quick question is the, the, the county <coughs> Paid for a large study to be done by the Flares Group. Okay, and is there anything within that study that gives direction or guidance with this type of situation and, and the, the future plans of what the county was to look at down the road? And what's best for the people and the citizens of Beaufort County is what this group should come to consensus with. So is there anything out of that study that we can recall or pull back up that gives any you. feedback to a scenario or a situation that's at hand like this? Real quick, uh, Mr. Mayor, is that being able to meet with a two and two, is that something that you'll be able to give us an answer on pretty soon? We'll, we'll send it out to we get your answer by Monday. Yeah. Without going back through that document, y'all got a document in front of you. My recollection of that was there was an immediate concern in the in the study about holes in the system. That was in the bath area where we were not being able to cover, uh, where, where some units were not being able to cover areas in an appropriate manner, in a timely manner, in response. So the city, the county, uh, out of that, there was a recommendation that they stand up uh, an EMS unit in that area and put in the umbrella QRVs to cover the areas so that you can provide additional. Additional things that were out of that was to look at a building system that could help all providers. Uh, look at uniform systems across the board. Look at uniform dispatch procedures. That was all pieces that said, as you go down this path, you need to look at these things. Now, I'm seeing it says right here on the set of things, it says one of the preliminary reports is to establish a countywide billing for EMS services and then EMS taxes and fee collection should be used to be funded each year <coughs> for the county through the financial budget. So basically the city of Washington will be exempt from this. It's just kind of what I'm hearing. Well and I think that's and I think that's doable. I mean that that's our, our goal was to over the next year to figure all that out. I mean, there were some immediate things that had to occur under this, and that was standing up one unit in the QRVs to make sure that people were provided the level of care that, that the Board of Commissioners wanted to be provided. Then these other pieces were, were pieces that would come along, and that's kind of the road we were starting down and the discussions we had started to have. Side, we want them to continue to do that. Uh, we, we, I mean, it's never been our intent to want to, to take over. Our, our concern is if we have a federal <coughs> system, then we want to make sure we step up and, and provide something to cover that. The, the city of Washington's coverage is not a failing system. It has provided service, uh, tremendous level of service for years and years, and continues to do that. So okay. we never envisioned that at all. Okay, well, they, if they don't have to quit, and they are providing their own financial stability in order to do their own. And I understand everybody's under the same plan. So what prevents them from continuing to do their part, they're taking and just divide them from the county and let them do their own. And if you do a countywide tax, just do it, you know, everyone with the exception of the area that the city does. If they want to continue to do their own and it's working, if, if that's working, why, 
disrupt that if it's working. And there was no intent to disrupt any of that. You know, let me back up two questions. Uh, first of all, you can't, if you levy a tax, you have to levy it countywide for, for the financial side. And again, financial, what I'm hearing, what, I, what, what they say is, what, what I've heard the mayor say, and I don't want to speak for the city at all. I mean, I believe my, what I've heard, what you've heard them say this morning, is they don't necessarily want to be out of business. They've done it for years, they, they've done it very well. The, the only issue that we've got is there was a vote by the city council that was 5 0 that said we won't, we're going to stop doing that. Now, if, until they say we've changed our mind as a board, then that's why we're saying we've got to make sure we put things in place just in case. Um, in case they won't stop. In, in case they say, yes, we meant what we said. You know, we took a vote and we meant that. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think that's where we are, and I hope that's not where we are. And that's some of the conversations we've been having. Um, <coughs> The intent was that everybody in the system continue to do what they're doing right now uh, and, and look at ways to improve the system and ways to help financially make the system more stable. So my one concern with that is they cover the old Ford and Clark's Neck districts, correct, at this time? They do. They're under so contract with the county to provide that until June 30th of 17. So if they stay on their own financials and billing, how is that going to affect the county? Because that is a county area or is that going to still stay on that end? Or how the way that works is the county levies that tax under a special service district. Those funds, and I'm not sure exactly how much is generated out of it, there's a, like I say, there's a, there's a contractual obligation that lays that out and provides for an increase over those years. Of, I think it's a 2% increase each year that the city is in that contract. So the county takes those funds that come out of that tax district for Clark's Neck and Old Ford and pays that to the city to provide service in that area. So that I mean, none of that would change either. So all that they're already getting the tax the tax dollars from that particular area that they're serving. Well, it's helping. There's a contractual relationship that was negotiated between the city and the county to, and it's a hundred and fifty three thousand, hundred fifty four thousand or something like that. Uh, the first year, then there's a 2% increase the next year, and the county, and I don't know how much, I can't tell you off the top of my head how much taxes are generated out of the old Ford Clark's Neck response, EMS response tax. I, I, my recollection is it's somewhere very close to that. It may be a little plus, maybe a little minus. But those funds are what are used to pay that. If there's any additional that's needed to, to pay that contract, it comes out of general fund. But that really doesn't change. You never said that would change. See, what you're looking at is if we go to a standardized tax rate across the county, which I told you a few minutes ago would not be an EMS tax, it would just be an increase in the Apple oil tax, the EMS taxes would all be eliminated. If you increase, say, it's going to cost four cents across the county, everybody, we can't, we can't just say, well, we're going to tax every. We're going to increase everybody's property tax in Boca County four cents, except for the city of Washington. They, they stay the same. You're going to have a property tax increase. It's, it's going to be a property tax increase for everybody. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying there. Then you, you just you're just separating. It. It's not yeah. probably you mentioned just calling something else so you can tax everybody instead of just taxing particular areas where you mean. Yeah, it, it, you, yeah it, it gets real saying. messy to have to have a countywide EMS tax. It's all messy, of, he calls, they have all like kinds of little districts set up that, that, that set their own tax rates. <laughs> Can the county not set the tax rate in those particular districts? The, the county does set the tax rates in those districts. And right now it's multiple, it's different ones. And it doesn't include municipalities because you can't lay that service district on the municipality. Like right now, it, you know, the, the comment has made, been made about Bath, Bath Township. So in Bath Township, there's an EMS service tax that's laid on that to pay for EMS services. If you live in Bath proper, inside <coughs> the city limits of Bath, there is no there is no county service, EMS service tax on the town of Bath itself because you can't lay that on top of any about hundred percent. And when it was done years ago, and then that wasn't that wasn't done. Now I've had conversations with Bubs Carson and he said our folks believe that it's the right thing for us to do to increase our tax rate to pay just like everybody else is paying. So those are some of the conversations we're having. But but other areas of the county may not feel that way or may not want to do that. And so you have to say, if you're going to provide that service and make sure the system is financially stable so that you don't have a 
um, agencies that are falling off because they can't financially do what they need to do, then, you know, and, and is it not, if it, if it is truly a county obligation to do that, and, and the statutes say it is a county obligation to ensure and make sure that happens, then shouldn't that be funded on a county-wide level? Or should it say, well, you're sitting over here, and you have this, and you may have enough to provide this level of service, but you've got this, and you don't, and then you have agencies who will say, well, you know, if, if I'm only getting this amount of money, I'm not leaving my district to go help somebody else because I'm financial, I can't do that. You know, those are the things that you want to break down. You want to break down those walls and say, we're covering an area border to border, and we're all working together to make sure that's covered. And we want to make sure financially everybody is stable to be able to do that. Is there, is there agencies that are off financial instead right now? I think there are agencies that are struggling to be able to do what they need to do at the level that it needs to be covered. I mean, if you look at an agency that is is paying staff to, I mean, if you think about volunteers, it's very, very difficult for volunteers. They do an absolutely fantastic job, but it's difficult sometimes for that coverage to be there during the day. So if, a, if, a, if you're paying for that service during the day to help supplement that, so that can create a financial burden that you need to help out with. And I think we have agencies, we have some agencies that, that are in that situation where they're struggling to be able to do that. And, and we need to help make sure that is viable. As far as financial are concerned, then we need to make sure, as it says, that we've got signed and performance contracts with each major provider or each provider over no later than July 1st, 2016. And we need to make sure that these performers that are struggling, this is because of that financial reason is that if they are struggling, we need to be able to make a decision to help them out, but there may be a department that's not struggling. That, that is going over and above or has a large sum of money in a bank that's somewhere that's not doing anything to help the citizens of, of the county. And, and that's the challenge because you've got these individual districts. And I mean, the board of commissioners can, can adjust those district amounts up or down. Like if it's two cents a day and, and, and that, that entity says, we need additional funds, the board of commissioners can change that level. They, they do that, they're required to do that every year on July 1, just like when they set the regular tax. They're, they're the, uh, by statute, they're the ones who do that. So if that agency says, we need additional, then they can raise that. Um, but then again, you still have the issue if you've got pockets where folks are being provided the service, but they're not contributing to the to, to fund the service. One thing about the countywide taxes, we were going to hold each district homes. We'll tell you, and, and these are just made up figures. Say in Chapter One, if you're there, uh, it costs them one and a half million dollars to run EMS for the year, and their receivables come in at seven hundred fifty thousand. Then we subtract seven hundred fifty thousand from the one and a half million, we cut them a check for seven hundred fifty thousand. Be the same way in the city. Their uh, receivable, I mean, their cost to the city was one point nine million dollars for the year, and their uh, their reimbursables came in at. Nine hundred fifty thousand. Then uh, we cut them a check for nine hundred fifty thousand dollars at the, end, at the uh, end of the year. Uh, now, what does that do? If we increase the tax rate, everybody's tax rate four cents to uh, take care of that, then uh, if the city wants to, if we give them the nine hundred fifty thousand, they can decrease their tax rate four cents, and, and and it all comes out even. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That, that, now we're on the same page. Now we're, that's exactly where we need to be. Well, that's that's what we're that's what we're that's what we're doing. We, we plan to do throughout the county. You just cut them a check for their the difference between the receivables and that. Now, it, it would actually, if you look at it, what well, we have looked at. It. Well, let, let me let me see the way I understand it. Is okay. right now your are. Uh, in the city, based on the information that I got, uh, you know, the public records I went to research, that it's cost you about one point nine million dollars to run the EMS for a year, and and your receive your receivables, your reimbursements from insurance, Medicaid, whatever, is coming in at about nine hundred and fifty thousand. That's correct. And so it's costing you basically on your tax rate on from your taxes, your fifty cent tax rate. 
talking about nine hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Is that right? That's right. Which is about a ten and a half cents on your tax rate. That's correct. We could come in, cut you that check for nine hundred fifty thousand dollars, increase taxes four cents. You can lower taxes four cents, and your people have not paid a penny more in taxes. Because a penny on a hundred thousand dollars is ten dollars for this. Well, it's by the city or the county, right? That's correct. So you have, if we do four cents, which I think is a reasonable figure, four cents. I mean, I, it, we haven't one hundred percent determined. Well, we've heard four and four and a half. But yeah, but whatever it is, yeah. I'm, I'm just using four cents. That 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 leaves you. Uh, we cut you to nine hundred fifty thousand dollars check. You you decrease your taxes four cents, which four times eighty five thousand is three hundred sixty thousand. That leaves you five hundred and some thousand to play with in your budget. That's correct. Extra money that you don't have right now. That is correct. Seems like it's a win-win to me. Right. Well, that's not the way it's been. That's not the way it's been approached. Well, that's, play, play, play. that's exactly how it is. That's my understanding of it. And Brian and I have sat down and talked about this longer than I wanted to. <laughs> uh, and and I have figured it. Every way I can, and, and the only way I can figure it is that, is that the city comes out about a half a million dollars ahead on the deal. If, if you lower your tax, now if you want to lower it the whole ten and a half, that's that's up to you. I don't have anything to do with that. You know, we understand. Or if you don't want to lower it at all, I, don't, I mean, I, I'm not going to get involved in the city's business, and I don't want to be. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> But anyway, I, I would like to see us sit down with these. And I think, see, that's why I want these two committees to meet, because I think a lot can come out of that. Right. The, the, the two and two, you can, we can come to a face-to-face -face understanding mm -hmm. of, of this whole situation. But, but you know, uh, if, if, if I was getting an extra half a million dollars at, at the county that I had not anticipated getting, I'd be mighty tickled.
15 minutes for the remote from the OLR to this place. Delay that by 15 months. And give this committee a nine month deadline to come up with a solution. <coughs>
uh, discussions with the city manager, and, and he's here, and he can sort of chime in on that, was that he felt that the city council would, would work with us on a financial solution to extend that 90 days to, to not, 90 more days, 30 more days, or 90 more days, or whatever that needed to be to allow for a transition. So if, if what we hear in two days, three days, or after Monday, so hopefully Tuesday, if, if we hear that, no, we are out of the business, we're, what we meant Monday is what we meant, uh, then our next step is to sit down with the city as the city manager and I talked about, it, extend that time frame for them getting out, if they do that, for probably another three months to allow us time to put all that in play and to stand up for the units that need to be stood up and then uh, take over that responsibility. That's, that's the second part been discussed. And that's we started those discussions Tuesday after he and I had our initial meeting to say, and I was very clear with him to say, you know, unless because of the way boards act, when a board takes a vote, you know, if the county commissioners take a vote, I'm under an obligation to, to go after that and continue on that until they take it, until they say, no, we're not, we change our mind. Mr. Robs is under the same. Obligation. So what I said to him was, I understand where you are, and we've got to start talking about that 90-day period and how we stand that up in case it doesn't happen. So we're, that's why I said we're working two tracks on this thing. We hope we don't go down one of them. We hope we do the other. I think one thing we need to keep in mind is that everybody, as we're in here today, talking about some, some stuff uh, that's going on, we need to make sure that everybody has the same communication that, that's going out. Recently, we first thought it was going to happen and it didn't happen. And I think that would help everybody on the EMS side of things and the financial side of things. Uh, to make sure that the message that's being portrayed by everyone in the county is the message that is really going to happen and not just what a certain individual wants. And what I would say to you is uh, if, if anyone has a question regarding anything, Pick up the phone and call me. It is ultimately my responsibility to ensure that the message that's being presented by the Board of Commissioners is consistent and concise. And I have tried to do that with different with, with agencies. I've, I've had those conversations with, uh, and I am bound to buy, you know, it's not necessarily appropriate for me to have conversations with elected officials. It's my, it's my, appropriate is to have uh, conversations with appointed officials. Uh, and we've had those conversations. We, and we, had, we started those conversations in February. Uh, and I did have conversations with every one of the MS captains to say, there are some rumors out there. Let me quash those rumors. If you have any questions, ask me those questions. And I stand ready to answer any of those at any time. Turn. Who's second? Who's second? 